morning. I am so, so glad to see each and every one of you in person and all of you at home in Canada, Michigan, and Florida, and Pennsylvania, and around the world. We are glad that you are here in the sanctuary of God's hope and healing together as one body. It has, it's been a Heavy, heavy week, hasn't it? A couple, two weeks, actually. So I, I welcome you wherever you are in your heart today to come, take a deep breath, come and find rest for your weary souls, come and find healing and hope for the journey ahead, and come and find determination for your spirit, for the actions God is calling you to take. Each one of you are welcome in God's love and God's presence. So we welcome you today and that wide, warm welcome for each one of you. A few announcements before we begin our worship today. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. So if you're at home, I invite you to bring your elements at home, your bread or your crackers or your morning toast and your juice or wine in the morning, uh, we welcome you uh, at home to partake in communion as well. Next Sunday is also Pentecost Sunday, so I invite you to wear bright red clothes, bright orange clothes, yellows. We will need the joy and celebration of next Sunday, um, so I invite you to make it be a fiery tongues of fire here and by what you wear um, as well. And a uh, reminder, I will, Jesse and I will be on vacation. I will be here next Sunday, but the following two Sundays after we'll, we will be away. We'll be gone for two weeks. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Well, our prayers are with you, and you will be missed while you are away, and our love will go with you. Friends in Christ and friends of God's love, I invite you to prepare your heart and your mind in worship. This is the day that God has made. We come together to rejoice and find God's love and God's hope together. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Come and find God's peace. And we can do that by calling each other into worship or the call to worship found in your bulletin. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day it is to worship our Lord. Please join me in our call to worship. I will read the unbolded text, and you will respond with the bolded text. Come, Creator God, to receive our worship. We share one faith in our one soul and one mind for our loving creator. Come, Jesus Christ, to receive our praise. We are baptized with one baptism, eat of one bread, and drink of one cup. Come, Holy Spirit, to receive our thanks. We are a field of many flowers, united in one soul of our soul. 
professing our need for God. Come eternal three in one, different aspects of the same God working in unity. Gathering as many different kinds of people in the unity of the Trinity, let our worship be of joy. Please stand if you are able and join me in our prayer of confession. We are not worthy of the rich inheritances of our common life. We confess that we have profaned the temple of this life by our heedlessness and selfishness. We have sought to gain advantage of our sisters and brothers and siblings who are bound together with us by so many ties. Have mercy on us that we may express our gratitude for your many mercies by contrition for our sins, and that we may prove our repentance by lives dedicated more fully to you and to the common good. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. People of God, hear this good news. As far as the East is from the West, so far have our sins and our burdens and all that keeps us away from each other and God been removed from us. In Christ, we have been reconciled in ourselves to each other and to our God. As a sign of that reconciliation and that justice and that mercy, live at peace in your own heart, live at peace with our God and live at peace with your neighbors. Take a moment to share in the peace of Christ, welcome each other here, share in your names too, and online I invite you to share in the peace of Christ online. The peace of God be with you all. Also with you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace to you at home. Peace be with you. Peace. Smart peace. I invite you to remain standing in body or spirit as you are able, and we will sing our opening hymn. They will know we are Christians by our love, which is the single leaflet that you have um, or on your slides at home. Let us sing together. <laughs>
Our scripture lesson today is from John 17, verses 20 through 26. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may come all and be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you that have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The word of our Lord. Yeah. Friends, I think I've rewritten this sermon three times this week. What angle is the Lord leading us to look at this passage? Originally, it was on church unity from John chapter 17. This is a theme verse in the United Church of Christ. You'll notice on our cross that that's the verse that when our denomination was formed in 1957, four different denominations came together, and this was the theme verse that they may be one. So taking that theme of church unity in light of... Uh, the shooting this week in Texas, uh, our black elders murdered in Buffalo last week, and the Taiwanese church uh, in California last week. We entered this text a little bit differently, so let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts lead us to you the one in whom we find strength, the one whom our soul finds healing, and the one who restores our joy. To your love, come, fall fresh upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. That they may be one, Jesus prays, as you and I are one. That's what Jesus prays in the Gospel of John chapter 17. We get a picture of Jesus shortly after the Last Supper, but right before the crucifixion. John 17 is a more heated moment in the Gospel, as the disciples' worlds are a bit delicate. Things are about to change. Their rabbi, their teacher, is about to be handed over to the authorities in the next chapter. What we see in these precious days of confusion and loss is that Jesus reminds them of the greatest commandment in John 13. And then another couple chapters later, he prays for them. In chapter 13, Jesus says, if you remember anything I have taught you, it is this. What is it? Love one another. That's right. Love one another. And then as we inch closer to the cross, we hear Jesus praying for his disciples that are gathered right in front of him, as well as for us who believe in him centuries to come. Did you catch that in verse 20? I ask not only on behalf of these, Jesus says to the disciples gathered here, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word. That is us. We're the ones that believe in God through their word, these disciples. We are the ones that Jesus is praying for. So when we open this text, as our wonderful scripture reader did, we hear Jesus here in our midst praying for us. 
our Jewish friends remind me that it's the, when we open scripture, it's a conversation with our ancestors. And so Christ is here right now praying for us, praying for you. And what is the content of this prayer? Jesus is praying in these delicate days before his death. The next verse gives us the answer, and Jesus says this, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This is one of the last prayers of Jesus, that we may be one. It is a passage I think about regularly. I mean, I cannot overstate how much this passage haunts me. <laughs> what does unity among Christians around the world look like when there are over 45,000 different denominations? When there are millions of people who think differently and yet we claim the name of Christ? How does this prayer become realized in our lives? Like many of you, I've been with temperance watching the news this week, I can only take so much, and watching people with the name of Christ respond so differently, so differently this week. Some I resonate with, some I don't. Some I think Jesus might resonate with, and some I think he might not as well. We only have to look and see how Christians are in conversation this week, claiming the name of Christ after a horrible, horrible tragedy. I wrestle this with this a lot because it is important to me because I think this prayer matters. This is one of the last prayers Jesus knew and prayed with his life with us here on earth. He knew our witness would be stronger, our love would be more whole, that there would be more healing and connection. And as our flag out front says, a just world for all by our unity. Our love would be deeper if we reached out in unity. Our personal healing would be deeper in unity. Unity doesn't mean we are all the same or that we all have the same opinions. Any one of us, I often say when I'm preaching, I know each one of us look at the text so differently, so differently. That's part of what the sanctuary holds, a multitude of understandings of when we enter the scripture. But as I keep thinking through the devastation and the violence, the sins of violence this week with the recent shootings, and I listen to different perspectives, politically, legally, spiritually, education, that's the gift of being married to a political scientist, lots of conversations in our home, what does this mean? And, and I've been thinking about this in light of the text, yes, Yes, we need many of these perspectives, all hands on deck to solve the sins of gone violence. Some are better than others. Some, you just want to say, oh, just be quiet, my brother. It's just let the Lord work in your life. Each of us are not responsible for solving the whole of the thing. But in our unity, Jesus reminds us, that we are responsible for standing with the hurting, with the coming alongside the grieving, to lifting up our fears and our hopes in this sanctuary where we can name those things, and to continue to pray for the unity that God prays for in us, that we may respond and get out of our ego, get out of the finger pointing, get out of that and come together as one to solve these issues. You know by now that Micah 6, 8 is a scripture of my heart. The prophet says, this is what God has shown you, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. I am not a politician. I am a pastor. I am a pastor who has listened to many of you this week whose hearts beat for healing and safety for all of us who see the faces of these children, of your children, of our children, of these teachers and our teachers who are tired of violence. I've listened to parents who have hugged your little ones even tighter this week. Teachers who are so tired from the past couple years of being right in the middle of so many fights. People 
people I love with very nuanced views and respect for our freedom and our safeties and the love of our constitution. So many wonderful people who care thoughtfully. Our sanctuary is a healing sanctuary. Our very beatitudes and our windows remind us of that, hence why I'm wearing what I now call my beatitude stole, the blessed are stole. We are people that the very beatitudes have touched our lives, the ones in the DNA of our worship of our building. And I've looked, I've come in here many times this week. I've cried, I've prayed, I have felt helpless. Uh, and I've brought our concerns to our God. And I've been reading the blessed are those that mourn and blessed are the peacemakers. I get stuck up on those two. Those ones kind of have claws in my heart. That they all may be one. We are people who need our own healing. We are people who stand beside the grieving and those in need of comfort. We are people called to various different roles for justice and care in this world. And that spirit of the prayer that Jesus prayed, that they all have be one. I thought it was most appropriate to ask 21 different people to come forward and light a candle for each one of the 19 kids who were killed this week and the two teachers as well. And in just a moment, uh, our wonderful musicians will be playing a song and each one of the lighters will come forward one at a time, slow it down. Just let our hearts get past the barrage of news this week and just, just be in the sanctuary. Just let God touch your spirit and your soul. This is not a political rally. This is not a a uh, time to figure out the legislation. This is a time to let God be God and come and speak to each one of us so that we can go and do justice. And I will light the 22nd candle on behalf of the shooter. That's too great of a burn to ask any of you to do that. On behalf of my role as minister, I will do that. And so at this time, I invite each one of the candle lighters to come forward one at a time, young and old as we let our hearts just come and be in the sanctuary. Candle lighters, please come forward now as your assigned order.
according to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overtake it. In this holy place, we are reminded that though we grieve, though we may feel anger or sorrow or fear, the light of God is stronger. The resurrection proclaims that death will not win. The moment in this holy place, unified in the witness of the light of Jesus, let this light of our hope lead us to work, to do justice, to witness of this resurrected Christ so that no more lives will be claimed and healing and reform in our daily life outside of these walls. This light is a commitment that we will work and be people of peace and of justice and mercy as our scripture calls us. Each of us are called to do our part to a world in need of care. To God be the glory that we may be one as God is one. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as you are able to sing our sermon hymn it is a newer sermon hymn, hymn to many of you, um, but a familiar tune. And it is written uh, by Reverend Carolyn um, after the shootings in Sutherland Springs, Texas in 2017. If we just talk of thoughts and prayers, I invite you to bring your whole spirit into this moment. You may be seated. The prayers are abundant, of course, today, but we would like to be praying for you and with you in ways that you need. So if you have any prayer requests or praises, please feel free to raise your hand and I'll come by with the microphone 
and you're welcome to share, and we'll incorporate that in the congregational prayer. As well as at home, please feel free to write in your prayers in the chat box, and uh, we will include them in our prayers. What are we praying for this morning, church? Prayers, please, for my niece, Miriam, for healing. Yesterday, my sister got married, uh, so that was a great celebration. Um, but at the same time, she just finished her isolation period of COVID, and my niece was diagnosed with COVID, and she's six months old. Your prayers are with you all. I want to pray for, um, thank you for, um, God let me get the wires to give me a second chance. If it's this time, it'll be the last chance. I'm going to pray for not screw this up. How much, how much stuff they did for me. And I want to, like, forgive them with a, the, like, kind of negative things. Like, I don't know. So I want to pray that they, I can work with them, not screw this up. Our prayers are with you very much, Kate. Thursday morning around 8 o'clock, I tumbled down the stairs of my um, into the basement. And my husband, I screamed. I was sure I was dying. My husband was in the kitchen, and he came running, fortunately for me. Um, he has training, so he checked out my back and my neck and all that before allowing me to get up. We went to the hospital, had all kinds of tests done, and nothing was broken. Nothing was harmed. My jaw needed to get a little rest. I'm still taking pills to make me feel better. But I, I can't believe um, I just can't believe it. So, week before, God had his surgery. I wasn't trying to compete, but, but I'm extremely grateful. Yeah. Oh. Jackie, you're grateful. Uh, you're here. Very, very grateful. Very grateful. Other prayers or Thanksgivings you want to share? I won't. Uh, I'll speak on your behalf, Jackie and Joyce. Um, Sunday night last week, I was with Jean Frank offering a final blessing. And um, it was very, very moving. Uh, we were all together praying over her and holding her. And um, our love is with your family as the hospice chaplain um, is tending to these last moments. Um, and our, and our belief in the resurrection is our hope. Our love was with you at home. Um, from Bruce, he says that his neighbors are traveling to Iraq, uh, and so he's praying for their safety. Yes. And I should mention our worshipers in Missouri as well, Bruce. Thank you. And it's good to be in prayer with you this morning, and our prayers are with your neighbor as well. All of our prayers and our hopes and our fears and our desires and our joys are, are heard. I always think that there's hundreds of prayers living here in the sanctuary when we come together to acknowledge them and know God is praying for us. This very scripture, Jesus continues to pray for us. So let us bring all of these prayers together in this moment and let us pray in one spirit. God, the friend of those with sorrow and grief, the one who knows the walk to Calvary, the one who walks with us in our pain and sorrows, who is closer than a friend. 
hear our prayers together in this unified congregation. We pray for our country, for every person who is grieving the loss of their child or grandchild or grandma, their church. Wherever there is grief, we pray for your spirit to attend to and bring hope and healing. We pray for humility among our elected leaders. We pray for wisdom. We pray for action. And we pray for no more lives to be lost to violence. We pray for each one of us and our families and our kids, our spouses, our grandkids, our nieces and nephews, and people who are like family to us. We pray your love and your grace guide each one of the people that are close to us. We pray for our congregation gathered around the world, that your faith and love would attend to each person. We pray for our community, for our kids, for teachers, for safety and care and the loving devotion of our parents. Hear now our personal prayers in this moment of silence. You, Christ, called all sorts of people to come and be your disciples. Business, agricultural and fishing, lawyers, and all the like. We see in your example that it takes all of us to get things done in justice and mercy and humility. So in that unity that you showed us, we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Ever-loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for the many ways that you serve and give. There are offering plates by the back door, as well as the QR code online, and our address as well. A special offering this month is for Neighbors in Need, which is a UCC organization that helps support those who are experiencing homelessness, and immigrants around the country. Please stand as you are able in body and spirit and let us sing our praises in our doxology. People of God, let us remain standing and body our spirit as you are able to sing our closing hymn, hymn number 393, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
look for the light of God, or as Mr. Rogers said, we look for the helpers, that the helpers give us comfort. And you are part of those helpers, each one of you lighting a candle is the light of God in you, bringing that light to the world around you. We need you, God needs you. Christ, our crucified one and the resurrected one, is in our midst guiding us and leading us to be people of resurrection. So as you go forward from here, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and give you peace. Go forward this week knowing how much Christ loves you. Share that love with the world around you. Go in peace, my friends. Remember to wear red next week. Thank you.